Okay, so we're looking at 7.7, .7, the transport of water in the xylem. And the first thing that you need to do is look at the GCSE overlap. So if you go back to 4.6 and 4.7 in the GCSE, watch those videos and then come back to this one. So at A-level, we're always trying to show that we've been to A-level class. And one of the things that students do at A-level is they rely really, really heavily on their GCSE knowledge. So what are the bits that are the uplift that show you that you've had progression in biology, that you've actually been to class. Clearly, uh, we know that water moves through the plant and it moves from cell to cell by osmosis. We know that, that was part of the GCSE. The A-level uplift is this. When you've got two plant cells together, like this, imagining that they're the cell walls, these are the cell membranes. There are two ways that water can pass through this plant. The first way is it goes across the cell wall, which if you remember, is really, really strong, but has big spaces in between the, uh, the, in between the wall. It's freely permeable, anything can pass through it. So water moves in through there, it then skirts around, scoops across and skirts around. So it's traveling between the cell membrane and the cell wall. This method is called the apoplastic pathway. Again, in AQA, they don't necessarily rely on you remembering the name of this, but they may ask you about the mechanism. Okay, the other way that uh, water can move by osmosis from cell to cell is it will come through here through the cell wall which is fully permeable pass through the cell membrane which is partially permeable through the cytoplasm through the cell membrane through the cell walls through the cell membrane through the cytoplasm and so on now that is osmosis because it's moving through a cell membrane and that is called the symplastic pathway. Now, strictly speaking, the other method isn't osmosis because you're not actually going across a partially permeable membrane. The other method, you're coming in across a cell wall, which is in the cell membrane, scooting around the edge and so on. So this way isn't osmosis, this way is osmosis. So the other area of uplift is that you don't just need to know how it happens, that is transpiration, you need to know evidence for the theory of transpiration. Now, you already know from earlier in AS that water is a dipolar molecule, which means that overall it has no charge, but within the molecule there are slight difference in uh, forces. So the hydrogen ions um, exhibiting a slight positive charge and the oxygen exhibiting a slight negative. That when those molecules join together through cohesion tension, they form almost like a zigzag pattern in the xylem. And if you, so these forces are cohesion and the forces against the wall are what we call adhesion. Now, one of the pieces of evidence to show that this model of transpiration works is that during the day, if you measure the circumference of a tree, it's actually smaller than at night. You'd imagine that the, the, the trunk of a tree would stay exactly the same 24 hours a day, but it doesn't. It's smaller in the day and broader at night. And the idea is that during the day, the transpiration stream, the pull on these molecules is made so it's really tight, which means that each xylem vessel actually takes less space. So the tree trunk shrinks. At night time, when there isn't any, uh, or there's less pull on the transpiration stream, these molecules sink back. They're still attached, but because of that, they push on the side of the walls of the xylem and they expand a little bit and overall many of those xylem vessels together 
increase the diameter of the tree. So the next bit of evidence that we need to look at is imagining again that this is my xylem vessel. I've got my water that is forming a continuous column within there. If in some way I was able to damage the xylem vessel there and introduce an air bubble, then we're no longer able to pull water out of the xylem vessel. We're no longer to lose that transpiration because the stream is broken and this molecule cannot pull on this molecule. The third piece of evidence is that if this air bubble is introduced, what actually happens is that, imagine this is our leaf and you've got your stomata and transpiration is happening, these bits of water will continue to be transpired, will continue to push out, or be pulled out of that leaf. And indeed, this water will be drawn in to the system. So then you've got water in the middle of this tube. You'll have noticed that this chapter is called mass transport. And what we actually mean by that is moving uh, substances over a large distance using pressure. How does that relate to what we're learning with the xylem vessel and how does that provide the uplift in A level? So what we're thinking about is this. Again, here's my xylem vessel, here's my leaf and here's the root. So when water is lost from the leaf in the process of transpiration, it creates a negative pressure here. So water is pulled into it, very much like when the heart has contracted and the heart relaxes, it pulls blood into it. The same thing happens here. Because of that, the water molecules are pulled up, and that's also aided because water will continue to move into the root cell, which then increases the pressure here and helps to push those water molecules up. So we've got a negative pressure created here and a positive pressure created here and that aids the transpiration stream and is the thing that can move water hundreds of meters up above the ground.